This course covers statistical process control from entirely practical approaches. It takes you from the concept of a process and a system to control charts to process capability analysis and finally to the Six Sigma applications in business and manufacturing. The speaker and author of this course is one of the top statisticians and quality control experts particularly in the fields of textiles, cotton processing, non-woven, spinning, weaving, knitting, and apparel industries. Dr. Yahya el was a professor of statistics, statistical process control, and quality control for 25 years at Auburn University, Alabama, USA before he led his own consultant company in 2013. In, uh, in this chapter, we are about to move into the second part of SPC, or Statistical Process Control, uh, and discuss the so-called process capability analysis. Uh, Process capability analysis is basically a comparative analysis between our natural status and some external or perhaps internal specified limits that are uh, imposed on us or self-imposed. It requires knowledge of descriptive statistics, which is the basic statistics, and also knowledge of control charts. Descriptive statistics, as we mentioned before, are discussed in our STAT course, and we just finished the session of control charts. To uh, illustrate the concept, the general concept of process capability, let us revisit the normal distribution. As we mentioned before, the basic uh, feature of the normal distribution uh, was that uh, if you deviate from the center by plus or minus three sigma, you have about 99.74 percent of the total area under the normal uh, distribution curve. These are the boundaries, the lower natural limit and the upper natural limit. So when we speak of natural limits, we're really talking about these limits dictated upon us by our actual process. We compare these natural limits with some specified limits. This is the upper spec limit. This is the lower spec limit. That should remind us with the design capability index we mentioned early in the first chapter, where we were comparing design tolerance with specified tolerance. Indeed, the process capability ratio is very similar in form to that design capability index. A process capability ratio will be the upper spec, spec limit minus the lower spec limit or the specified tolerance divided by the upper natural limit minus the lower natural limit or the six sigma as you can see here. If you recall with the design capability ratio a design capability ratio or design capability index of greater than one was good. Well, a process capability ratio of greater than one is also good, as you can see here. Let's just quickly examine this situation illustrated in this graph. 
You see here the upper spec limits and the lower spec limits fall within the lower and the upper natural limits, the six sigma boundaries. Which means this is where the customer, that's what the customer wants. But our process is going outside that, meaning there is a lot that are outside the spec limits. Well, by this equation, this will give us a CP of less than one, which is an undesirable situation. For a one-sided issue, we will follow a similar procedure as we did with the design capability index. If we are concerned only about the lower spec limit, then the PCR or CP is mu, which is this value here, minus the lower spec limit, divided by this time, we're going to say three sigma, because we're concerned about half of the distribution. If we are interested in the upper spec limit, then it's the upper spec limit minus mu divided by three sigma. So this is a straightforward equation. Let's take an example here. And this example is very practical. I mean, you as a customer uh, dealing with four suppliers. Now, your specification limit, this is a case of, uh, uh, really, you can use that for any example. Uh, well, suppose you're talking about uh, uh, material of some form, and uh, the upper and lower spec limits perhaps uh, describe the weight or the thickness of this material. So uh, the upper and spec limits are always the same, because these are the specified limits that you dictate upon your suppliers. 40.75 is the upper, uh, 39.25 is the lower, and you are shooting for a target value of 40 weight or thickness or whatever the parameter is. But you have to deal with supplier or process A or process B or process C or process D. So which one of these suppliers would you deal with? You notice here, let's just look at A, B, C first. These three processes exhibit the same average, 40, which happen to be also your target value. Very good. So you don't have any problem with the mean. But this process have a standard deviation sigma of 0.24. What does that mean? Well, we'll have to look at the second process, which has a standard deviation of 0.15. And you can see that with a standard deviation of 0.15, the process is very narrow while with the standard deviation of 0.24, the process is wide, the distribution is wide, meaning higher variability. This one here is higher than both, this is 0.5. Now process D is a bit odd, because the center of the process, or the center target of 40, is not at the center of the process. You see where is the 40 here. So this is way out of center process. Indeed, it just so happened that your lower spec limits fall at the center of process D. Okay? This is your lower spec limit. Very good. Well, if we follow the previous equation, then we can calculate the CP or the PCR or the process capability ratio for each process. Well, in this case, the upper lower spec limit difference, which is 40.75 minus 39.25, divided by 6 times 0.24, which is the 0.24, which is the standard deviation of this, gives us a process capability ratio of 1.04. That is greater than 1, so that's okay. If we move on to the next process, process P, again, the upper minus the lower spec limit divided by 6 sigma, and sigma in this case is 0.15, that give us a better process capability ratio. You can see here it's 1.667, while here it was 1.04. So obviously process B is better than process A. If we go to process C, which has the highest standard deviation and since we're dealing with the same spec limits here the cp is 0.5 so that is by comparison 
is the poorest process 0.5 is the poorest or the worst case scenario followed by process a104 followed by process uh, b which is the best of 1.667 very good so how about this process now well we have a slight problem here the pcr does not sense the recenter of the process so as a result of that blindly it will take the upper spec minus the lower spec and divide it by six sigma well <laughs> six sigma here happened to be 0.5 just like process uh, c so one would expect the same pcr or the same process capability ratio why not the difference between process C and the process D, however, as we see in this graph, is that process D is way off center, while process C is centered. That leads us to one of the common problem in using the process capability ratio as an index of the capability of a process, is that using the, the ratio does not account for any recentering of the process. In other words, if you want to compare different processes using the PCR, you have to make sure that the center of the process is on target. In other words, using the PCR, we can only cal compare process A, B, and C, and the process C, uh, sorry, D in off center is not to be compared here. It's meaningless. And that leads us to the so-called CPK or the process capability index. A CPK is defined by the process capability ratio we mentioned a minute ago times a term which is 1 minus k. What's k? Well, k is where we account for the target and the center of the process. It is equal to the absolute difference between the target minus the actual mu divided by one half times upper spec minus lower spec. What does that mean? It means if the actual mean of the process is on target or equal the target, the k value will be zero and the CPK will be exactly equal to the CP. Okay? So, the CPK is only useful or only different than the CP in cases where the actual mean of the process is different than the target value, such as process D that we mentioned a minute ago. So now, here we go. Here is the process A. And since the actual value of the process is equal to the target, then the CP will be equal to the CPK, and we have no problem. If I go to process B, same thing. If I go to process C, same thing. The CPK will be equal to the CP. So only in process D, where now <coughs> we have a process off target, the mu actual in this process is 39.25. Okay, the target value is 40. So if we calculate the K, okay, which is the target being 40 minus the actual mean of the process being 39.25, we have a K of 1. And that is, by the way, typically the case if your lower spec limits fall on the center of the process. So with a k equal 1, what would be our CPK? <laughs> our CPK will be equal 0. That is as low as it can get. Keep in mind that the CPK and the CB exhibit the same interpretation. Equal 1 means exact, greater than 1 is capable, less than 1 is incapable. So what the CPK does for us? It does account for the recentering or the deviation of the mean of the process from the target value. Okay? Very important. 
So although process C and the process D exhibit the same uh, PCR, okay, or CP, okay, process D exhibit a much smaller CPK. And as a result of that, it is the most inferior process that we have to deal with. Now, can we use the control chart to determine our process credibility? The answer to that is obviously yes. Indeed, before you begin doing any process credibility analysis, it is very important that you have control charts established in your process, which means that you have a process in a state of in control. If we go back to the definition of PCR, it is the upper spec minus the lower spec divided by six sigma. The problem here is, if I'm dealing with a control chart, how I'm going to get the value of sigma? You see, in dealing with the normal distribution, it was easy, because we calculated sigma from the process. But now that I have a control chart, how I'm going to go about calculating sigma? 